After another successful weekend for Purdue baseball, as the Boilermakers take three of four against Akron, a big challenge upcoming as Purdue will travel down to take on top 10 Ole Miss. I'm Kyle Charters for this week in Purdue baseball, along with the head baseball coach Greg Goff and Purdue SID Ben Turner. It will be uh, a great weekend upcoming, traveling down to Ole Miss uh, after taking three of four uh, against Akron over the weekend. You have to feel like your team is in a pretty good place to make the road trip. Uh, no doubt. South. No doubt. You know, Kyle, we really finished on a great note. Um, really felt like our hitters finally started getting more comfortable in the box, uh, kind of getting back to what we try to do, hitting line drives and ground balls and, and putting pressure on people. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can maintain that and, and continue to build off of that um, going down to Oxford this weekend. Well, no doubt offensively, uh, 54 runs <laughs> over the weekend is a lot of runs. Uh, you did a lot of that damage in the, in the last – uh, three games of that series, obviously. Uh, uh, what was working well for you? Well, I, I just think our guy, like I said, you know, I, I felt like after Friday, um, you know, we, we just was at probably a low point for yeah. us on Friday. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we set a couple of guys down and put some other guys in there and um, just kind of maneuvered some things around the lineup. And I think our guys finally just got tired of it. Like, hey, we need to quit trying to do things maybe we can't do and just get back to the approach that we need to have. And I tell you, it was beautiful. I mean, it was amazing to see our guys just really stay on balls, using the whole field, um, adjusting with two strikes. Like, to me, some of our best at bats was with two strikes yeah. um, this weekend. We, we talked uh, earlier in the season about the luxury that you have that you do have a little bit more depth, I think, on, yep. on this team. And that showed up on yes. Saturday because you were able to, to change up the lineup a little bit and, yep. and you know try to get some guys in there that would give you a little bit of spark. And we've seen some of those guys earlier in the season give you a spark off the bench and pinch handing roles and right. you know just coming in. So you know it does allow you a little bit of flexibility when you need to go that direction. It does. You know we we got depth. Yeah. Um, we have options, and uh, if somebody's maybe not doing uh, well, we can put those guys in there. So I'm very thankful that we have a lot of depth. And um, you know from that standpoint, and I think guys are are starting to identify some roles and, and things like that. And as, as a head coach, I'm always you know, uh, you know, for me, two things, making pitching changes when you take them out when, and then the lineup itself yeah, yeah. Um, are things that, uh, for me, are the two toughest things for me to, to right. figure out. Coming back from injury, impressive to see first team all Big Ten DH, C.J. Valdez, not only establish himself in the lineup, but five doubles in yeah. 16 at-bats. Like, talk about a welcome back, you know, moment. And kind of the same thing last year when he got healthy early and he was a big spark to that 15-0 start. When he gets his consistent at-bats, the difference it makes for him is amazing. It is, Ben. He, he's, you know, worked hard to get back um, from his shoulder injury and, um, you know, hamstring injury. And just to have him in there, I think, um, just gave our guys confidence. They know how good of a hitter and player he is. And he just brings some stability to the middle of the order. He's an RBI machine. He's a doubles machine. And um, I think that really had a big difference in us kind of kicking things off offensively. And he hit a ball Sunday that probably maybe should have been, would have been a home was, run, overruled, yes, it a, was a, over, turns into yes. a double, but it helps the five double stat, I guess. So <laughs> we'll take it. I'm sure he wanted the home run. Yeah. Regardless, uh, middle infielders, Evan and Paul, what a crazy weekend those two guys had hitting two, three in the lineup. You know, they only got Evan out, what, four times? And one of those was a sacrifice fly, which yep. is amazing production from him. Right. He moves up to the two hole and has a big weekend. And then Paul went bonkers power wise you right. know, four home runs a big triple on friday which got overlooked in the pitchers duel yeah i mean those two hitting back to back the wisconsin vibe going strong there going strong you know those guys get along great they're roommates um you know and they're really good players you know we're very blessed to have those guys here and anytime you know i, I don't know if there's many times in my career i've had a, a second baseman and shortstop be that offensive um, they're, you know, really solid defensively. Evans really solid, and Paul has really worked hard on his defensive. I think a lot of times, over these last three weekends, he's made some tremendous plays. He, he's gotten so much better defensively there. Um, it's really helped us out, and, and just, you know, they're seeing the ball well, and um, I think they're feeding off of each other. And, and uh, hopefully, we can keep that keep that thing rolling this weekend uh, down against Ole Miss. The 54 runs is going to be the, the highlight of the weekend, but the pitching staff was good, too. Only yep. 22 hits in the 32 innings. I think the opponent, Akron, just hit 191. Yeah. Didn't hit very well with runners in scoring position, just 5 for 28. It, you, you have to like those, you know, the situational pitching there that you got out of guys to be able to, you know, when Akron was threatening a yep. little bit, you were able to get out of it. There, There's no doubt, Kyle, and, and Coach Rooney's did a tremendous job 
um, with our pitching staff. Uh, we talk about it all the time, pitching in the clutch. Um, I thought those guys really did a great job of that this weekend, getting ahead of hitters, A, a 3P, um, you know, trying to get ahead in the first three pitches. They did a great job of that. And, um, you know, let's don't talk away, take away from Kyle Lewinsky getting his first yeah. career start here at Purdue. Been in the bullpen the last couple of outings, gave him a start, and I absolutely dominated yeah. Um, those guys on Saturday night. Yeah, he had looked so good in his first couple of relief appearances that it uh, just felt like maybe you needed to, to put him in there as mm -hmm. a starter, right? I mean, That's just, right. just to give up one hit and the 22 batters he faces. Right. Is pretty impressive no matter what there, the competition is. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You, you know, I think sometimes we take for granted those type of performances. Um, but, uh, you know, and again, we have not played good on Saturday night, right? The, the second mm -hmm. game of a doubleheader, um, we had gotten beat twice. And so, you know, we, we kind of want to flip that and put him in there. And, <laughs> yeah. and um, boy, I tell you what, he just gave us a – not only did he throw well, but he gave our, our, our bullpen a chance to get some rest in case we needed him on Sunday. Um, and so forth. So it was a big day, big day for it him. Seems like he has the right kind of mentality that you like too. Oh yeah, he, he goes oh, after. Oh yeah, he pulls his hat down and says, yeah. "Here it comes." You yeah. know, you got to beat him, and uh, not long we keep playing good defense behind him, mm -hmm. he'll give us a chance. Yeah. Meanwhile, got quality outings again from Cal Steven and Jonathan Blackwell. They both get you into the sixth inning. You definitely wanted that. Uh, Calvin Shapiro, you know, he had his outing Sunday get interrupted by that long, long inning. Right. So there was a little choppiness to that, but he had his best outing as well. Yep. Aaron Suval doesn't give up a hit again, gives you seven outs in a very tight game Friday tight. night. So up and down the pitching staff, the guys who really established themselves as the one you kind of trust the most were there again when you needed them. It was, Ben. And, um, you know, t talking with Shapiro, you know, it was so good that we kind of extended that game a little bit early on so he could kind of go back out there. Um, I, th I think you saw the first inning or two, he really struggled, had bases loaded there in the first. Bolton makes a big play to get out of the inning. They don't score. Um, but I thought his last couple of innings was really good. He kind of relaxed and, and decompressed a little bit and, and really threw the way he normally can throw. And uh, we needed that. We needed that. And uh, it was good to see him have some success and hopefully we can continue to build off of that. Even though you lost Friday's game, in some ways, was that one the most useful in some ways of the C weekend because everyone had to stay so locked in through the final 27th out? I think so. I think, you know, our guys, um, you know, I, I, told, I told our team, you know, Saturday morning, like they always respond. You know, anytime we play bad or something goes wrong, they're just such men of character. Um, they're resilient. Um, they're passionate about what they do. And I knew, I didn't sleep very good Friday night, but I knew when I woke up on Saturday, our guys were going to show up and, and get after it, and they did, and they took care of business in, in a big way. Well, Ole Miss this weekend, uh, top five, top ten, depending on what poll you look at, mm -hmm. national champs, on the road, great environment. Right. Um, you know, all those things. It, it, I think it'll provide, at the very least, a good measuring stick to see sort of where you guys are right right now. Is that sort of what you're obviously looking for victories, right. but also looking to see sort of where you stack up? Well, you know, for, for us, we're going down there to win a series. I yeah. mean, that's the bottom line. This isn't no, hey, let's go see what you know, what's going on in Oxford and Mississippi. I've been there. <laughs> been fortunate enough to win some games there. Yeah. And, um, you know, th this is a business trip. You know, it, it's time. You know, I, I do the schedule. Um, it, it's time for our program to continue to move forward, and, and uh, that's why I scheduled them. We had had a games already scheduled with somebody, right. and I canceled those games to because they had an opening. And um, so we're looking forward to going down there and competing. But don't think the Boilermakers ain't going down there to try to win this series this weekend and, and really get off to a good start, getting prepared for the Big Ten play in two weeks. Is this something you want to be able to do in, in the schedule during the non-conference season, sort of maybe that? That last or second to last mm -hmm. weekend before you get into Big Ten play is you right. know, go take on somebody that's that right. really challenge your that's team. That's right. That's and that's, you know you can see that's why we like to go to Texas early and, and play yeah. people that are similar to what we do. Um, but that you know third, fourth, fifth weekend or so you'll see as as next year we you know have a good schedule and, and stuff like that. Kyle, you, you want to make sure you're getting prepared mm -hmm. and, and playing some competition that's really going to challenge you. Right. Mike Bianco has been the head coach at Ole Miss since 2001. What are his teams most known for from the point of view of other coaches? Well, I, I think Mike, he's one of the most respected coaches in my, in my, you know, in my life. I mean, I, I think a lot of Mike. I've known him for a long time. Um, just a hard nose man, just get after it, toughness. When you go to Ole Miss and play their teams, they're going to be tough. You know, he, he's challenging those guys. Um, to me, one of the best coaches in, in the country, to be honest with you. Before, I saw Ole Miss before he got there, you know, in my Mississippi days. And I saw the transition with him into what it is today. And uh, he's, he's a tremendous coach, tremendous man. 
and uh, looking forward to getting down to seeing him and, and visiting him and uh, getting a chance to play his team. I think last time you were at Swayze Field was you took your Alabama team there in 2017. Mm -hmm. It's more one of the more renowned stadiums in college baseball. Oh, yeah. Do you agree with you know the atmosphere and you know it, it's a little bit of a lion's den? Oh, it's great. It's great. It's a big, great environment for, for our, our players and our coaches, our fans. I know we have a lot of folks going down that this weekend. Um, but it is. It used to not be that way, Ben. It, it, he's really, again, he created that. It might be Hinko created what you see at Ole Miss. Um, I, was, I used to go there. We played a long time ago, and there would be a few hundred people there. Uh, he has created something that is absolutely amazing. And, uh, man, I'm looking forward to getting an opportunity going down there and taking our Boilermakers down there to compete this weekend. They made a, a heck of a run through the tournament last year and, and into the, in the World Series. They've had a little bit of turnover from a personnel perspective this mm -hmm. year. But I imagine they do a lot of things still well. What kinds of things will you have to do this weekend to have success? Well, we, we got to, you know, we got to play our game. You know, we can't let the atmosphere and the yeah. crowd dictate who we are, what we try to do. Just go ahead and play, you know. I tell our guys all the time, you got to buy into the process. Doesn't matter if you're playing Akron or Ole Miss or, you know, Ohio State or Indiana. You, you got to do the things we do, and, and that's putting pressure on people. We got to get it on base, you know. We got to we got a bit of control the box. Uh, mm -hmm. We got a bit of hit behind runners. We got a bit of score, and when we have opportunities, you, you got to – but had those big two out hits like we've been getting, and uh, we got to have some some timely hitting in there. You got to play really good defense. You can't give them four and five outs, guy. That's yeah. the biggest thing when you go and play teams like this that are, you know, offensive. Um, you, you can't give them four and five out. You got to make the routine plays. You got to make some tough plays as well. Uh, you got to pitch in the clutch and uh, have some big timely hits. You get a chance to win that series. Best of luck this weekend. Should be a great one. Looking forward to it. You can't wait. That's uh, Purdue head coach Greg Goff. His team getting set to take on Ole Miss this weekend. That'll do it for our show for this week. For Ben Turner and Coach Goff, I'm Kyle Chargers. Back again next week for 